Arrow season two finale, unthinkable. A great season finale that does exactly what it's supposed to. It leaves me with more questions than answers for season three. And I'm very excited for some of the stuff that they have coming up, especially the flashback stuff. It was the biggest surprise about the flashbacks. I was, I knew, at least I was really, really hoping considering all the commercials showed that Oliver was actually going to be fighting Slade. I figured he has to actually be getting off this island in these flashbacks and we finally get to see that and we find out where he ends up and it's Hong Kong but it turns out that he met Amanda Waller years ago before he even got off the island so that was really really cool to see and it makes sense and it shows how she was able to figure out who, that he was the one who was the arrow because she knew oh you know we've been watching him on the island we've seen what he can do when he's worked with us for a little bit that's got to be Oliver Queen so that was cool to find that out how she figured that out because I was wondering how do they have these resources where they actually know who he is and now I get it but that was a great thing to see at the end it was cool to see them fight both in the flashbacks and in the present and I love that fight between Oliver and Slade how they went from flashback to present time and they did it back and forth where they would throw a punch and then it would go into the flashback and then they would do something else where it pans behind Slade and then goes into the present they haven't they hadn't done that before so it was really cool to see that come to a head where both their huge huge fights where Oliver had to make a big decision were played back to back at the same time so it was really cool to get that and we just get so much out of this episode as we should in the season finale and it was such a good one and we get Roy he's back he has his own mask now so that's cool he's gonna be speedy or red arrow whichever one he might end up being speedy since uh, Thea's leaving. We get Thea leaving not only because she was trying to escape the city, but now that she has, I guess, met her father, knowing that he's her father, she's decided not to be weak, as she put it, and she's going off with Malcolm Merlin, and who knows where she's going to end up, and I'm hoping that we get a lot of her in season three. I hope they don't just kind of push them to the background because I know John Behrman obviously isn't in the show too much anymore I don't want that to happen to Thea's character too so I'm hoping that since she is one of the big parts of this show and she's leaving the town Malcolm Merlin will also be in the show a lot more and we'll get to see what's happening with her and who she's going to become and I'm excited to see that because she seems like she kind of just flipped a switch and now she's just straight evil like she's gonna be just mean and hardcore to anyone and everyone and Malcolm Merlin's probably the perfect person to follow if that's how you want to be so we're gonna have to wait and see if we get to experience what happens to her but I really hope they don't push her to the background and we only get an episode here and there I hope she's really in the foreground and even though it won't have the other characters it could just be the side story within the episode where sometimes they don't have to do a flashback and it could be instead of flashbacks of what happened with Oliver it'll be um, cutaways to what's happening with Thea and I would love to see that because it has it'll lead to something big and I'm just excited for that but great action in this episode some a great great twist at the end of the episode to trick Slade into kidnapping Felicity kind of still mad at them because I thought he was serious when he said he loved her once again, they messed with our heads, made me mad a little, but, you know, he beat Slate because of it, so I'll let it go, and it was just a good episode, it was a great fight, like I said, them switching back and forth, it was cool when they all fought in the tunnel, they had the League of Assassins with them, and they at least had some of the people, and fortunately, Sarah does not get killed off, That I was really worried about that when she came back, but fortunately, she does live, and she goes off with the League of Assassins. And I thought them finding Malcolm Merlin in a city was going to end up happening. And that would sort of lead to the League of Assassins being the big part of season three. But that didn't really happen. Sarah just sort of left and now she's going off with them. And Malcolm Merlin's going off his own way with Thea. So the team is now, it's, all right, we got our four characters. We have Laurel who is unfortunately in a bad spot right now because she's with her father who after being tossed by the one guy into the desk he's bleeding from the inside he didn't even know he was wounded and he's spitting up blood and stuff and I'm I'm really hoping he doesn't die I thought he was gonna die in the episode which would have 
really sucked. It would have been a great twist, but it still would have been incredibly sad, and it would have sucked because I love his character. I think Detective Lance is just a great character in this show, and I like the actor who plays him too. But hopefully he'll be okay. And I'm thinking since he did, they didn't actually kill him off in this episode. He might be in a coma or something, or at least just in the hospital. I doubt he'll be in a coma. But he'll at least be in the hospital for a couple of episodes in the next season. But hopefully he'll be back in fighting shape. He'll be able to go out and do his detective thing once again. And everything will be perfectly fine with him. But that was an interesting little scare at the end of this episode that they didn't need to put in there. So that's why it kind of has me worried. Because he could have just been perfectly fine. And the episode kind of could have gone on the exact same way. But instead he's spitting up blood and they freak this out. And then don't follow through because it's leaving us wondering what happened to him. So I'm hoping he's alive. And I'm really confident that he is because if they were going to kill someone off, I feel as though they wouldn't leave them alive and then kill them in the next season. Unless they did do it where it was because of some villain he just happened to die while he was in the hospital. But either way, I'm holding hope that he turns out fine in the next season. But... I can't wait to see how things play out and I'm so excited to see the flashback stuff because I was just waiting. I knew that they had to have taken him off the island and now we get to see it. I'm curious to see what he did for Argus and what the sort of inner workings were between him and Argus and how he started off as, I don't know, maybe a mercenary. Maybe that's what he did because he learned how to fly a plane. He learned a lot of different skills when he was off the island and considering it was with Argus, I think he learned a lot more skills than I had in my head. I thought, you know, maybe he just fought a bunch of people or he left and went somewhere. But if he was with Argus, he probably knows how to do a lot more stuff than we've actually seen him do. So he can fly a plane. We learned that in this episode. I'm sure he knows a lot about different types of guns. He, of course, speaks Russian, which we learned in multiple episodes. We've seen him do that since season one. And who knows what else he can do? He knows how to fight with swords katanas and i'm sure other types of swords too so we'll get to see the other side of the arrow his other expertise like what else can he use as a weapon outside of his bows and arrows and his hands because he obviously knows martial arts we've seen him kill people in season one and just knock people out in this one but i'm excited for next season it'll be great to see and i'm curious where all the characters are going to go especially laurel now that she knows the secret how's she gonna be incorporated in season three what's she gonna do i doubt she'll become the canary and it was funny when uh when sarah gave her the jacket their father he was of course in the background giving them their moment but when she put the jacket on his face was kind of like why can't i just have one daughter that doesn't run into bullets that's what his face was like he was just like oh, like why is this happening but i thought that was pretty funny and then he said of course don't give me ideas but I don't think she's really going to become the canary. I don't think that's just where her character is going. I could be wrong, of course, but I think I just like Sarah as the canary more, I guess, because I'm used to it. And also, Laurel does, doesn't have those skills. She wasn't with the League of Assassins for years. And I hope we get to see that in the flashbacks as well, because they still haven't explained it, of course. It's, you know, she fell through the ship, which when I saw that scene, I thought, oh, that's where he thought she died. And it was weird that it was almost exactly the same as when he thought she died the first time and she just slipped out of sight and fell into the water and he thought she was gone. And I was thinking after what I saw, if I was on the boat and she slipped out and then it's like, oh, she's alive. That would have been the last thing that made me think she died. If she just slipped out of sight again, I would have been like, she's probably fine. She probably just swam to the surface. But <laughs> hopefully we do get to see some flashbacks with her and that would be a great um evolution for the flashbacks where if some episodes focused on oliver and what he was doing and then some of the flashbacks actually focused on sarah and her working with the league of assassins which i feel like they would only really do if they bring the league of assassins back in, in during season three and they have some sort of big gamble or big stake in starling city for some reason but we'll have to wait and see of course until next or i guess until the fall but great season finale so comment below let me know what you guys thought of it your favorite parts least favorite parts and of course tell me what do you guys want to see in season three or what are you most excited for as far as some of the little
cliffhangers that they put in this season finale. Comment below, let me know, and of course, I'm not going to forget to talk about this. I just wanted to get the episode out of the way, but we finally got to see our premiere of Flash, our little tiny itty bitty teaser trailer is coming this summer or coming this fall i mean i wish it was this summer but coming this fall they were teasing it the whole episode like it's right around the corner right around the corner it was of course the end of the episode because that's what every series does ever when they're showing you a trailer but i liked it it was interesting really tiny it was it was basically like the, a teaser we barely did we saw more of oliver than we did of barry so i thought that was kind of funny but it was it was sort of surreal, which is weird to say, because obviously it's comic book characters, so they're not real to begin with. But it was weird being in the middle of this episode, and then this trailer, clearly it takes place during some time when Oliver knows his, uh, Barry has his powers and stuff. And so we, it's just everything's peaceful. It's like him walking up a hill, it's trees, and it's fog and stuff. And it was just weird, like all this chaos going on in the actual episode. And then it's like, well, look how calm he is. He's just walking. Just Everything's fine. No cars on this road. Just nice early 5 o'clock in the morning fog. And he's just walking. And there are little rumbles and the rocks are moving and stuff. And he shoots the arrow. I love the sound effects that they had. And I'm hoping that wasn't the arrow just going in slow motion. I think it was actually... Uh, I'm going to watch it again. I think it was actually uh, Barry actually running next to the arrow. And, of course, he caught it. We got the little pose where it was actually the side of his face, which was, I believe, the very first picture that we got to see. But that was really cool. It was a great little promo. It had the comedy moments where he catches it, and then he's like, you know, he's happy for himself. And Oliver's like, show off. I thought that right there was perfect that they did it that way because everyone who knows Flash knows that he's the comedy character. He's the funny guy. And so he catches it, and it's just, it's plain and simple. He catches it, he cheers for himself, and then Oliver's like, show off. And I thought, that was perfect. It was just really good, because that's what it needed to be, because he's Flash, he's the funny one. And based on how Barry was when they initially showed him in Arrow, I think he'll be really good. I'm really excited for that show. I cannot wait to see a bigger trailer for it. I'm hoping we get to see more of him running around maybe telling some jokes or like catching a bullet or knocking a bullet out of the sky i don't know but i can't wait till we get like a full trailer which we'll probably get maybe in august hopefully around i think july is comic-con i'm hoping we get a premiere trailer out of that somewhere at least just a longer trailer where it's just all him and so i'm watching it now but was really glad to see this trailer it was it's really good it was nice and cinematic like super sunny and stuff and it's just it's a good trailer it just it was cool he catches the arrow it's just nice and of course the suit looks really good it was i, I saw i'd seen the picture when they premiered the full look i wasn't a hundred percent sure about it when i initially saw it but seeing it now like actually in motion seeing the whole suit and him of course actually moving in it it does look nice. It has a real arrow quality to it, where sort of like in the middle, it's kind of like leather, but then the arms, I'm not big on fabric, so I wouldn't know, but it's, it just has that sort of the same look to it, like arrow suit, like I'm looking at it now. His was more cotton and stuff with the hood, but it's actually, his hood seemed different in this trailer. I won't even get into that because it doesn't matter. The point is, the suit looks good. The trailer was good. I'm excited for this show, and of course, I'm sure you guys are, if you like Arrow, then you know Flash is going to be good, and I'm curious to see how good it's going to be, because it's going to be the funnier version compared to the Arrow, which is a lot more dramatic with a lot of the obvious things we've seen, even in season one, but love this season finale, love the trailer, can't wait for both shows to come on in the fall, comment below, let me know what you guys thought of the episode, what you guys saw in the trailer, and of course, thanks for watching.